Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. The tricky clock tick tocking, each painfully long minute unlocking. The tumbly jumbly can't close your eyes feeling. What will it be? When will it be? Oh, the anticipation, the watching, the wishing and waiting to let the wiggles and giggles and goosebumps go. To find, to see, to finally know. What will it be? When will it be? Oh, the expectation, the what ifs, the oh my's fairly shaking, longing for this night's joy all year, that moment of hope so very near. Oh, but would they, could they, imagine a gift so great, a gift that compelled the whole world to wait? When a heavenly Father gave all mankind his Son, the one. Love defined. The magic of Christmas is more brilliant, you see, than a bag or a box tucked under a tree. The true love of Christmas really began when holy God became holy. Man. Joseph, it's time. He's here. And after that, then, we started into the whole church thing. And about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, we would head off to church. Actually, it was more like 3.30, because that was the children's program for church. And so we'd get there at 4 o'clock. All of us would run through our songs. We would, we would practice, and then we would have church at 5, and we would leave. Now, my, my, my church had services at 5 and, and 7. We would go to the 5 o'clock. We would get done with the 5 o'clock at 6 o'clock, maybe 6.15, if pastor preached, maybe 7. And we would, we would head out from there to my grandmother's house, my mom's mom's house. And we would eat snacks and drink soda and eat cookies. And the parents would have this thing called wine that I wasn't allowed to touch. And then we would, we would exchange gifts, all right? And we would exchange gifts in that family and then we'd all play with our gifts, and then we'd pack them into the car. And at 10.15, I remember the times vividly, the parents would walk in and say, time to go to church. And we'd all load back up into the car, and you'd get to church by about 10.30, because you had to get there that early for 11 o'clock service, because there were so many people in church, there wasn't an empty seat. And we'd sit there, and again, service would go from 11 o'clock till usually 12.30, 12.45 if pastor preached longer than normal. And then we would get home about 1 o'clock a.m. Now my ritual, since I was probably an infant, and it still works this day, is at midnight service, I walk into the house, and the first place that I look is under the tree. Because you have to see if Santa came. It's after midnight, right? Right? And so I would walk in, I would look under the tree, Santa hadn't come yet, and mom and dad would look at us and say, go to bed. And they'd send us to bed, they'd tuck us in, they'd give us our kisses, they'd, they'd, they'd pray with us, and then I'd lay there in bed, my sister and I, and we would lay there and lay there for hours, that anticipation you remember that? That anticipation of Santa Claus coming. It's like, it, it, it made me shake in bed. I was so excited. And I'm sure that many of our children here have the same feeling. And parents and college students as well. And that, that, that waiting felt like an eternity. Finally, I would fall asleep, right? And then, as every child does on Christmas morning, 6 a.m., 5.30, I'm out of bed. And it was like clockwork. My sister and I could sense that the other one was out of bed because we would come running out of our rooms at the same exact time. We would meet in the hallway, and we would bolt into my parents' room. Mom, Dad, it's Christmas, it's Christmas, get up! Mom and Dad, Mom and Dad, it's Christmas, it's Christmas, get up, get up, get up! <laughs> and my parents would look at me, and they'd say, go back to bed, you know? Give us 15 more minutes so you'd lay there in bed, which felt like 15 gazillion years in child time, right? And we'd lay there and 
15 minutes are up. We're out in the hallway. We're in my parents' room. Get him, get him, get him. It's Christmas, it's Christmas, it's Christmas. After about 10 or 12 times of this, my parents would finally get up. And the rule was, mom would tell us, go back to your room, get your slippers on, and wait. We'd get our slippers on, we'd ra race to the top of the stairs, and that's where we'd sit. My father would climb over us, he'd walk down to our basement, and he had three jobs. Start the coffee, light the tree, and light the fire in the fireplace. And then he always said the same exact thing. Well, you kids can come down here, but I don't see anything from Santa. He quit doing that, um, well, he hasn't, and he still does it for me. Uh, and we'd come running down, and sure enough, Santa Claus would have come, right? But those moments, and you, I got pictures of me as an infant and as a child here running down the steps when I turn that corner and see the tree. And, and I see the tree, and I'm just excited because I know it's Christmas. In fact, the, the picture of my sister there in the bottom right-hand corner where she's running around the corner, she was too slow. I had already beat her around the corner and was already unwrapping gifts. That's me on the top. I was already at the gifts, going at it, before she had even made it down the steps. And that's how Christmas was. Do you remember that, that joy, that, that incredible excitement that you had on Christmas morning? I do. And I want to make sure that we all get to relive and always live in that joy. Now, we find joy probably as adults in different ways, right? I mean, we may find it still in Santa, but there are also other ways that we find it too. You might find it in work, you might find it in the good days, in a vacation, in your spouse, in loved ones, in family. And whatever it may be, you may find joy in different things in your life. But I want to give you another way to look at joy. Many of you probably know this, but I want you to look at the word joy because I think the word joy means much more than just happy. See, Jesus, others, and yourself is a great way to look at joy. What we're going to do is I want to unpack this word this morning. I want to unpack the word joy, and, and we start with the word Jesus. That's where it all begins, right? The J stands for Jesus. He is the reason for joy, right? We're, we're celebrating it now. We're celebrating it in church. We get to celebrate it all day today and tomorrow, and many of us probably until January 2nd. If it was up to my daughter, it'd be like February 29th, which never happens. So, I mean, we celebrate with Jesus all the time. This joy that we have in Christ is something that's amazing, and we celebrate that now in his birth and eventually in his resurrection for us. You see, Jesus is the foundation for joy. He is the reason we have joy. He is our joy. We continue with the O for others. The second word, others, stands for those around us. We find joy in the other people that we are with. Now, there's two ways that we can look at this. We find joy in other people and, and how we serve them, how we help them, how we take care of them. You know, service to others is one of the great things that we have. We get to serve them, help them, and support them. In fact, this morning on the news, I don't watch it much, but I did happen to flip past this, it said that in every person, there is a chemical released when you do something nice for somebody else that creates joy in you. That's what they said. Joy in you comes from a chemical. Now, I mean, I'm going to put my joy in Jesus, but it's a release that comes of positivity and energy and excitement and joy. So we get to serve others and take care of others. But it's even more than that. Uh, most of us over the next week, week and a half, or however long, are going to have family gatherings, right? We're going to have worship time together. We're going to have community time. We're going to have time in groups. We're going to be with a lot of people. And these times together are great times for joy. Yes, they can stress us out. But you get to sit down with other people and you get to experience joy 
in what it means to be part of a community, to be part of a group of people, there is great joy in that. There was a study done by a scientist on puppies. I love puppies, okay? I have a dog. I love dogs. And they did this, this uh, study where they had a dog that was... Uh, uh, two dogs that were in a confined space by themselves and two dogs that were by themselves, but two of them were picked up by a person every day and given time together every day. Person would take it up, coddle it, play with it just for a little bit and then put it back down. And they got time as two puppies together just playing with one another. The other two were isolated. They were still fed. They were still given water. They were still taken for walks electronically somehow. I don't know. This is all science stuff. The two who had time in community were happy, healthy puppies. The two that weren't were the most depressed dogs they had ever seen. Yeah, I know sad face for depressed dogs. But the idea is still the same. In community, there is joy. And there's great joy when we get to gather together with all kinds of people. A few weeks ago, Pastor Carl showed us about our community and what we've done to serve others outside of ourselves. And he gave us many rundowns of the coats and the the gift cards and the meals that we all served. And our congregation not only gathered around serving others and in community serving others, but rejoiced and had joy in that. I've never seen so many smiles coming out of church in all my life. Finally, finally we end with the why, standing for yourself. Sometimes it's hard to understand how we find joy in ourselves. But here's the deal. We find joy in who we are and what we do because of who we are in the J for Jesus. We find joy in our abilities. We find joy in who we are. We find joy in the blessings God has given us. We find joy in the accomplishments that we have for God's kingdom. We find joy in the fact that we are who we are in Christ. You see, joy is a great thing for all people. And this time of year, we get to hopefully celebrate and see that on even a greater level. And when we take these things and we make joy into Jesus, others, and yourself, it's also the standard. Jesus comes first. We put others second, and we put ourselves third. And when we put those three together in that way, we have joy. There was a, a writer, Mr. Williams was his name, or I'm sorry, Mr. Wilson was his name. He was a writer for, uh, he wrote children's books and and storybooks. And eventually he got sick and he was taken to the hospital. And he was put in a room with another gentleman by the name of Mr. Thayer. These two men sat and got to know each other uh, very well. They shared stories of of Christmas's past, of their families, of their grandkids, their great-grandkids. They had a great relationship. One day, while they were laying in their bed, Mr. Thayer and Mr. Wilson heard a parade. Now, Mr. Wilson had the bed closest to the window, so he could see out the window and see what was going on. And Mr. Thayer asked him, he begged him, He said, will you please tell me about the parade? And Mr. Wilson, who got to sit up just a few hours every day, described everything from the glitter on the the floats to the, the flying balloons to the band to the MCs to everything in great detail. And Mr. Thayer thought he was there. And every day when Mr. Wilson, after that, got to sit up, he described for him what was going on. Children's playing in the park, seeing the school across the street, the traffic jams on the highway. He described everything for him in great detail. And Mr. Thayer, who couldn't even sit up in bed because he was so sick, laid there and absorbed it all in. Eventually, Mr. Wilson's health got 
worse and worse and worse. And eventually, Mr. Wilson passed on. And when they moved him out of the room, Mr. Thayer begged, begged and pleaded that he could take that bed closest to the window so he could maybe just view the sky and maybe get a chance to see what was outside. So they moved Mr. Thayer closer to the window. And as the nurse went away, Mr. Thayer, obeying the nurse's rules, sarcasm included, propped himself up in bed to look out the window. And to his wondering eyes, he saw a brick wall. You see, Mr. Wilson gave of his gifts, his abilities, to help another person along the way. He told him the story so that Mr. Thayer, who couldn't see it, could enjoy what was going on outside. That's where joy comes from. Joy from Jesus. Joy that we give to others and the joy that we have for ourselves. Brothers and sisters, during this Christmas season, I invite you to express, experience, and bask in joy. Because today is a great day to experience joy. Pastor Carl has, I, I don't know if you know this, Pastor Carl is, is kind of likes art, and he does some things with art. And this year for Christmas, he did uh, this rendition of joy. As you can see in the, in the picture that he has up there, it's got joy in the center of it. But there are many other words throughout it. Those are global words for joy. Our calling is to show joy to the world, to everyone, everywhere, all the time. Not just December 1st through December 31st, but from January 1st to December 31st. Let us be joy to the world. Share Christ's joy with other people and experience it for ourselves. Because brothers and sisters, that's joy. So be joy for all people. Walk in that joy. Experience that joy. And know that the true meaning of Christmas is joy. Because after all, Jesus is joy. And all God's people said, Amen.